Hello everyone, uh, I'm Michael Levy. I'm an associate professor at Harvard Medical School at Mass General Hospital, uh, and I see patients with MOG antibody disease. And today I'm going to update you on our MOG initiative, which is our research program in MOG antibody disease. The MOG initiative spans the spectrum from clinical trials all the way down to immune cells in the laboratory. And so I'm going to take you on this spectrum from the beginning with clinical trials. And I would first like to announce that we've launched the first worldwide phase three clinical trial in MOG antibody disease. It was just launched on Friday, uh, September 30th. And we expect the first patient to enroll sometime in December 2021. And it's going to um, include 20 different countries and 50 sites and we hope to enroll over 100 patients total by the end of the study. The trial involves a drug called Rosanolixizumab. The short name is Rosamab and it uses a mechanism that is similar to how we believe IVIG works. And for those of you who are on IVIG and who benefit from it, we're hoping that Rosamab does essentially the same thing, but instead of an intravenous infusion, this is a drug that comes on a patch that would be placed on your body. And the medication diffuses into your skin for about 15 minutes, and then you rip off the patch and you repeat it every week. Um, our, the primary outcomes um, are as expected to prevent relapses, and the trial will or does include a placebo arm. So you, there is about a 50-50 chance that if you participate in this study, you could be enrolled in, in the placebo arm and receive the patch with a just normal saline instead of the drug. The good part is that even if you're in the placebo arm, if you do unfortunately relapse, then you would automatically be um, uh, moved to the open label phase, which guarantees you the drug from then on. We also have two other trials that are being prepared for MOG antibody disease. One will involve a daily pill, and one will involve a monthly injection. And these two trials have not yet been publicly announced but they are very likely to take place in the beginning of 2022 and hopefully will be available uh, to most of our patients in the US and worldwide. So those are, the, those are the clinical trials that are being developed for MOG antibody disease and will hopefully result in FDA approved drugs. But we're also experimenting with other approaches to treat MOG antibody disease and those involve, uh, those, are, those are currently in the laboratory phase. In the laboratory, we have two or three levels that we think about in terms of um, research. The first and lowest level is in the Petri dish, where we can grow immune cells and expose them to things like the MOG protein to see how they react and to see if certain drugs can block that reaction. Once we have a candidate um, pathway to target or a drug that we think might be effective, we can go from the dish into a rodent model. There are very good rodent models for MOG antibody disease that have been developed since the beginning uh, of the last century in the, with the idea that these models represented multiple sclerosis. They were using MOG um, to develop these models of multiple sclerosis and when some of their drugs didn't work in multiple sclerosis, they didn't know why. Now, of course, we know that MOG is a different disease for multiple sclerosis, and we, we still have the benefit of all those rodent models. So when we have a drug candidate that we think works in the cells, we can then move to the rodent model. Once we think that the rodent model is effective, we can then advance that into clinical trials like the kind I already described. In the rodent model for MOG antibody disease, 
we've partnered with two different companies that have products that may work for MOG antibody disease. The products that they have target the immune system in a very different way from immune suppression. Classic treatment of MOG disease has involved suppressing the immune system or depleting the MOG antibody. With the projects we have going now with these two companies, the approach is different. The approach is to re-educate those immune cells instead of suppress them. They both have products that try to do this, one with a nanoparticle that contains the MOG protein to teach the immune system that it's not harmful, and the other one has a lipid disc, also with the MOG protein attached, uh, same target within the immune system to teach it that MOG is not harmful. This is very similar to a vaccine where you sensitize the immune system against a certain protein, but in this case, we're not sensitizing, we're desensitizing. And so the approach is, is a little bit different, but it's the same idea, same immune cells that are involved. They're the immune cells that tell the immune system whether to attack or not. And in this case, the signal is the not. So don't attack the immune system to MOG. We're um, at the beginning stages with both of these companies. In one case, though, uh, um, we both applied for a grant together from the government, and it was awarded. So we'll be starting that project on October 20th. With the other group, we're still working on funding. It might come from private industry. And so in summary, we are very excited about research in MOG antibody disease. This is one of the hottest areas of research in neuroimmunology. The Mayo Clinic is reporting that they are detecting three times as many cases of MOG antibody disease as all four and four disease right now. And MOG has captured the attention of industry and regulators and investors alike because it is a very treatable disease and has the potential for tolerization therapy, um, especially with those companies as I mentioned.